This would be the world's quickest tutorial if I told you that all you needed to do to create beautiful black and white grades was to hit command six to open up your color wheels and then drag the global saturation slider all the way down. While that's technically not wrong, there is a much better way to do it where you actually have control over the different brightness values in your footage. Let's get right into it. The first step is actually to hit command six to bring up your color wheels and totally desaturate your clip using the global saturation slider. If you're getting the color boards instead, I would highly recommend heading over to Final Cut Pro settings and setting your default color correction method to color wheels. Next, we need to add an HSL curves adjustment and I need to put the HSL curves adjustment before the color wheels. Now, any Luma changes I make to certain color values happens before converting to black and white. Let's turn the effects off and have a look at the colors in the scene. We have a lot of red and dark brown tones, some lighter blue up here, and some orange in the skin tone and down in the corner over here. I'll turn the effects back on and I'll open up my hue saturation curves adjustment. I'm going to start by selecting the eyedropper tool here on the hue versus luma curve and I'm going to select his shirt. I want to make the subject pop a little bit more from the background so to do that I'm going to increase the brightness of the shirt a little bit and I'll select the chair here and you'll notice that there's a line that gets drawn here to show the color value of the chair so it's right next to this red dot I'm going to pull that down I'll pull it down too far and you'll see what it does if you overdo this effect it can look awful but just bringing it down enough will darken this chair and I'll probably brighten his shirt a little bit more like that we're going to make a few more adjustments but have a look at the difference this makes already next I want to select the blue color that we had here on the wall so I'll go ahead and do that and I'm going to darken this a little bit just to keep the background slightly darker than he is making our subject pop now if I pull it down quite a bit you'll see we've got banding happening over here so I'm not going to pull it down too much but I'm also going to smooth out this curve so we're affecting more of these blue color values I can probably pull it down a little bit more and I don't want his face to get lost so I'm just going to bring up some of my skin tones which is kind of around this orange dot that I've got here if you see I, I pull it up it just brings up the brightness of his face probably pull it to about there and if we have a look at the before and after on that his face is still clearly the subject of the shot and we've just brought more attention to it and darkened the background a little bit. Playing with these values might involve a little bit of tweaking just to get it looking right. When I preview this before and after, this part of his beard here on the side looks like it's being darkened too much. I'm just going to go back to this orange dot here and bring it down slightly just to even that out a little bit. Lastly, let's add a color curves adjustment here to adjust the overall contrast of the shot. I'm going to make a very subtle S curve and raise the black areas a little bit over here to soften the darkest parts of the shot. Before we compare the before and after results, I made something really helpful that I want to share with you. If you want to learn more color grading tips, including how to use scopes, how to create looks, how to fix common color grading problems, then go ahead and check out my color grading masterclass, which is a comprehensive course I've put together that packs in a ton of value and will immediately improve your color grading skills. I'll leave a link to it down below. So we took this color shot and created our black and white grade in just a few steps. Comparing this to the shot that was just desaturated without the HSL curves adjustment, you can see that when we add the HSL curves, we have a lot more separation and contrast between the different brightness values in the shot. Here's a bonus but optional tip if you want to make the shot look even better. Black and white footage often has a nice filmic grain to it and you can apply it with a free plugin for Final Cut Pro or a built-in plugin. Let's start with the built-in plugin. Under the stylized category, you'll find the film grain effect. I'll double click to add that to my shot and I'll change the style from iMovie grain to realistic grain to get rid of the color tint and I'll adjust the amount of grain to my liking. You can also use the free MLUT plugin from Motion VFX. You can find the link to that and a bunch of other free plugins on my website. It has a ton of great features like being able to add LUTs and to tweak the grade but you can also use it to just add good looking film grain. I can change the type of noise, the blend mode, and adjust the amount to my liking. One last time, here is a before and after comparison of our black and white grade, and a close up comparison so you can really see the difference that this little black and white color grading trick makes. If you enjoyed this video, then you've got to watch this video next where I color grade footage submitted by you guys. I'll see you there.